morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 448 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day, is Thursday, August 15th, 2024, and well, so far it looks like it's a little grayish, but doesn't. Also, the sun might make an effort here today. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. B. Ray. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. And no, once again, we did not coordinate. <laughs> a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mystery at Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, not sure what kind of show we have for you today because it was very, very, very short night. But hey, we could, there's always news. Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today, sir? Well, sir, uh, I, I think it's pretty good, actually. I'm, I'm a little tired. Um, but I have a, a long day ahead of me. Gonna be, as soon as we wrap the show, I got to literally pack and on the road driving back to Ottawa. So I don't know if it's going to be a long drive today. It's you know, depending upon how my mom and dad are feeling. If, they're, if we only go a couple hours, we only go a couple hours. We, we see what we can get done. The way I see it is we got all the time in the world, right? What's the rush? No, there's no rush. There's no rush. And exactly. Like said, you know, if tomorrow you're, you know, you're on the road, like I said, now that you've taught me how to do this, right? So there, there will be a show regardless, but yes. Regardless, yes. Fine. There will be a show. Time, do it at your own speed. No need to, especially if you're driving long distances, no need to fit in more than you think you can on a day or, you know, so it's, it's just like three hours more. Let's push through. Like just no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We we actually discussed yesterday about how about how about we book a hotel in Riviera Lou. And I said, well, let's just take a look at the map. And I said, according to the map, not calculating traffic, it's a four and a half hour drive. I said, what if at three hour mark you just can't go anymore? And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. I said, let's just go until you decide that's it. We have to stop, and then we stop. It's that simple, you know. If, if we drive two hours and it's like, no, I can't do anymore. Okay. No problem. No problem. It's not a big deal. Yep. And who knows, you know, if there's not a, um, something like hotel or motel around, there might be an Airbnb available closer or something. Oh, there's always something. You can yeah. check something. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah there's, there's always something. There's always something near, nearby that you can stop if you absolutely need to. So, uh, yeah. Safe, uh, safe travels and uh, our best Thank to you. your mom and dad, of course. We love beef mamas and papas. They're 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 sitting about and grizzly uh, mamas and eight papas. Feet, eight, they're eight feet away from me, right over in the kitchen. Oh, good morning to you both. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're doing well. All right, kits and cubs. Uh, boy, 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 boy. News. So did you did you visit your vet yesterday to get your MRI? <laughs> But but 
how is the premier of, of the largest, most populated province, or the most populous, not the largest, because Quebec is larger, but the most populated province in the country, how do you make a joke about people's health care by saying, well, you can go to the MRI, to go to the vet, get your MRI. It's like maybe maybe if you didn't cut $21 billion for the next five years out of the health care budget, people could get an MRI instead of sending this to the veterinarian, which, as you all know, OHIP does not cover. I know, I know. Do you have you don't medical? joke about that? No, I, I, I don't. And trying to do it from my phone is darn near impossible. Okay, it's um, it's doable, but it's a slow step by step process, yeah. and then it chews through the processing power, and there are limitations on the phone. You can do a lot, but there are limitations because it doesn't have the processing power of like a, a, an iPad or a, or a proper desktop or or a heavy duty laptop, you know. Yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, uh, Doug Ford uh, held a, a little press opportunity. And the things, oh my God, I just, I, I don't know. It's like everybody there had consumed from the same well or the yes. same class. Uh, because I think don't know how you make I'm I hope it was in jest uh, but it was meant to be in jest but still it's not funny it's not I funny I, I don't see how you make that joke considering the context right it, it's not like there's a oh there was a little fall at the hospital one day and oops right I mean we have hospitals closing ERs for days at a time. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, and, and this is not just Ontario. I mean, like, you know, in Alberta, you know, if you're, you know, anywhere near the Hinton area where everybody was evacuating to uh, during the Jasper wildfire, uh, if you needed hospital services, it happened to be closed while you were there. Escaping the wildfire and the hospital, right? So, uh, You know, you're making this joke, mm -hmm. and then he was at a ribbon cutting ceremony. This is the context for King Animal mm -hmm. Hospital. Uh, and the thing is, is that if you add the COVID stuff, all the people died in the long term care centers, centers. Mm -hmm. and then you add the fact, the story that we're talking about kids in care who have high needs medical needs, for example, uh, or, you know, uh, well, I guess you could call them medical needs too. Um, you know, if your, your child is severely autistic, you know, and you need yes. some supports, uh, because you can't do it 24 seven, uh, or mm -hmm. supports in terms of, uh, somebody interacting, uh, with the child to, you know, get them to be somewhat verbal in some way or, you know, or whatever, or, you know, to, to create these, these pathways, uh, right. that uh, people can uh, start using or to find a connection, a way to connect, right? Uh, I read a story once about a, a family that could only connect uh, with their child through Disney movies. That was their thing. Mm. So if they would use quotes from Disney movies, then they would have a conversation. If they weren't talking from that like this, nothing would happen. The child was unresponsive. But to find whatever it is, that portal or that entry to communicate, yeah. To communicate. Um, you know, the, if he hadn't been doing all of those things as well and failing at all of these things, mm -hmm. right? That'd be one thing, but we've had people die. And then because of all this delayed healthcare and unavailable healthcare, we have people waiting one year to get assessments for cancer. Mm -hmm. And then they find that their cancers are inoperable or they're untreatable. Look, I mean, people are dying if not like just dropping dead, you know, right. Getting late diagnosed. And he's making light of it. Not, not being able to get treatment at all. Right. So we're, we're, and we're talking ten, tens of thousands of people. Correct. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it seems that, uh, he joked about Ontario's burdened healthcare system and he quipped that overflow patients can attend the animal hospital for their MRIs and CT scans. Um, that's not funny. 
That's not funny, especially again when we said they spend less than the national average on healthcare, and there's per person. Uh, 21 missing billion dollars in the Ontario no, it's been cut. system. Yeah, it's been it's been cut from the healthcare well, system. Cut. 21 billion over the next five years. Yeah. Okay, cut over the next five years, and then we add what Andrew Coyne mentioned on that. Now 70 billion across the country. Across the country, yes. that is, that's not put in. So it's like. Um, and the thing was is that everybody else there that was behind him also laughed yeah with that joke they're laughing because, all the way to the bank and it's like I'm just like the, the, really there's none of you that just like no dude that shit's not funny like that's no. that's really not that's not that's not a hey it's like, if someone you loved now has an inoperable cancer uh, maybe you could go down to the vet for your MRI or CT scan. Ha <laughs> ha! There was nobody. That was like, Dude, that's not funny. It's not funny. There's nothing funny about it. And let's remember this. Uh, but that's that group thing. This right? is very like important. And, and the yeah. wanting your access and like, oh yeah, let's blow up. Like every okay, Doug mm. Ford makes a joke. Everybody laugh. Ha 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 ha! You know, it's like this is. Why didn't a reporter just go? Excuse me. What did you just I say? Was- what did you just say? You're making light of the fact that pe- people cannot get an MRI or a CT scan, and, and, and you're telling them to go to a veterinarian clinic to do it? You're, you're the guy who's responsible for thousands upon thousands of seniors dying in, in, in long-term care homes. And, and the care that they were getting in these privately run homes, not provincially run, the privately run homes, was so poor that battle-hardened military medics have PTSD from what they witnessed in those homes. And you're telling me to go to a vet to get a... Go to hell, Doug Ford. Go to hell in a handbasket. Get on the express ride train to hell and go there and stay there. Because what you have done, what you have done to this province, what you have done to our seniors, what you have done to children, and what you are doing to the rest of us right now is reprehensible reprehensible how did this man get elected again because enough people didn't go out and vote yeah. enough people decided to be ambivalent and say well according to the newspapers he's going to win anyway so my vote doesn't count actually your vote does count get out and vote people or we get stuck with an idiot premier like the one we have who is killing us killing our seniors and now he's killing children is he is he is he is he actually taking a knife or a, no? But his policies are killing people. I don't. I, don't, I just. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. Uh, it's just so heartless. Mm-hmm. It's soulless. It's just. Uh, it just it bothers me. And there are journalists that are complaining more and more and more. Like this is applying mostly to the prime minister, right? Uh, because the prime minister has been popping up places, right? And they're saying, well, we don't have his schedule. Because he says he's not campaigning, he's not doing this stuff, but he keeps on popping mm-hmm. places. Clearly, he's campaigning. Why is he lying to us? Why is he lying to us? Why is he lying to us? And it's like, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, he's not lying to us. It's journalists, like you did in this situation, where somebody did and said something that was completely and totally horrible. Mm-hmm. An awful that wasn't funny because he's trying to make a joke. I mean, when you make a joke like this in front of a situation like that, it's because you're trying to deflect or try to make it seem not as bad or exactly know, make light of a situation. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, oh. And, and friends, there's a folks, way to, there's friends, a, you know, right, exactly. And there's a way to do that, I guess, on certain subjects and on a certain, certain subjects, you know, it, it might be okay. But there's you don't make light of that. But yeah, not on stuff that involves people dying. Not on stuff that Mm -hmm. involves parents having to surrender their children to the system because we can't help them. Not about stuff. 
you know, where our parents or our grandparents died because there was a, you know, not about death by a thousand cold cuts, for example, as Jerry Ritz learned, right? There are certain things. Well, do you, do you remember when he got his first COVID shot, how he feigned like he died? Do you remember that? He got his first COVID shot and they're filming it. And he's like, gets a shot and he's like, I'm like, dude, did, it's one thing for a comedian to do it. You're not a comedian. You're the premier of the province. You're in a leadership role. You don't joke about these things. Yeah. This is not, this is, it's not a locker room where you can make those kind of commentary and, and make jokes like that because of the fact that millions of people are being influenced by this. He doesn't recognize his role, clearly. He thinks he's just, you know what he thinks he is? He thinks he's the banker for the province of Ontario. And he's going to give out money to those who he deems worthy. Mm -hmm. That's all he thinks. Because yeah. right, right now he's running, like, what, an $8 billion deficit right now? Yep. Yep, about. And we have someone on the chat here. Doug Ford has done so much for Ontario, but the alphabet mob will never give him credit for anything. No one is perfect, but can you guys give him some credit? Number one, nobody is perfect is not an excuse in politics no. because nobody is perfect. Nobody is expecting perfection. No. People are expecting no, absolutely an not. honest, good faith with the interests of the citizens first in mind, effort. And then we recognize that I'm, people I, are human like this. Nobody's demanding perfection. And it says, what no, more no. has he done? What has he done for done so much for Ontario? I mean, name something. Give me one. I, okay. Because I'll give him one, one credit. I, I'll give him one credit. He did do something that nobody else had done in a very, very long time. He didn't do enough, but he did this. He raised the ODSP monthly stipend. He did it by $50, which is literally negligible, in especially when you consider what when things went up. Exactly. Yeah. So it's negligible, but he did do that. That is the one thing he did that was net positive. That's the only thing he did that was net positive. And again, I'm not, it's not even I'm, it's not even net positive, actually. It's, not positive, it's because exactly. it's negligible. But he did exactly. do that. He did raise it. He was the first government but, to do it. But, in, but it was negligible. Yeah, but and in the meantime, meantime, homelessness, nothing. Mm -hmm. We got to mm -hmm. build the homes. Didn't get it done. Hasn't done a damn thing. Oh, and the homes he was going to get built? I, I like he says we're building homes. I'm like, no, Doug, you're not building anything. Your wealthy billionaire developer friends want to build McMansions along a highway that you are proposing to build through the green belt that nobody deems necessary. Mm -hmm. He oversaw the transfer of eight point three billion dollars in wealth in the green belt thing, for which his government is now being asked questions by the RCMP. Then there was the Good. Service Ontario deal. Then mm -hmm. there's Therm deal to staples, like yeah. Staples. Well, the, 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 there's the state. So, and he's turning around and he says, We've got nothing to hide. Yeah, nothing to hide except uh, mandate letters, what the deals with those developers were, what <laughs> his terms with the LCB. Like, right? There's so much. There is so, 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 so much like this. Now this person goes, now we are fair and given credit. It's not being fair and given credit. It's one symbolically positive thing in a one. sea of like this. I mean, it's like, that's, if you're looking, so well, give him credit for the good stuff. It's like. He did one thing not, and it was ineffective. It was ineffective. It's, it's not a situation where you turn around and you say, you know, the good things erase the bad. You look at the whole thing. Exactly. He is destroying our bill, our province's ability to generate mm -hmm. wealth for the people. I guess for that means us the, the, for our services, for the things that we need. He's kneecapping the ability of the government to raise that revenue. Because he's transferring public wealth to private interests. He's inserting mm -hmm. a middleman in for every service thus inflating the price this and you know they're saying they're sitting there going like this he made ontario great again it's like if you're in a situation where fewer people are able to access health care if you're in a situation this where parents are giving up their kids 
because they can't get services that they need. It's like, there's nothing great about that. And let's but, remember the two other things. I, she's I, but done. that's the things I can't understand this mindset. I don't get it. That you can, you can learn about people dying in mm. long-term care homes, kids not having access to air conditioning in June in classrooms that are like 37 mm. degrees Celsius inside. Mm -hmm. 37 degrees Celsius, by the way, is the temperature of the body. That's right. So at one point, when it gets hotter than that, you can't actually cool down, and then you start to you overheat. And we're talking about yeah. kids, and we're talking about the fact that we pump billions into education, and then we don't create the winning situations for kids to actually be able to retain what it is that they learn. It's squandering the investment. Like There is nothing great and i do not understand this attitude that some people have it says oh well you know says, he's look at all this news look at all this activity look at so yeah okay yeah he's he's for the ev car things now but after he took out the battery charging do? station ended the green energy program that okay. wind set up because he didn't like it so he killed all that and now he's putting money into it it's like you already cost us 200 million dollars doug Yep. So you're spending and, uh, more now. You could have kept left it in place. Just leave it alone. Just leave it, just alone. Leave it in alone. In Alberta, they took a tip from that. They canceled their re renewable thing, and now there are reports. And they were the leading there's... green energy uh, uh, province in not only the country but one of the green energy leaders in all of North America. And now it seems that they've canceled enough projects that would provide enough to provide energy to all the homes in Alberta. That's how much they killed. So, a, a, a place that has no hydroelectric power for the most part, because Alberta yeah. has very little in the way of water. <laughs> oh, because now, like this, we got the the victim thing. I'm just speaking my mind. I'm now I'm being attacked left, right by the liberal censorship. It's sad. No, being told you're wrong when you're wrong is not censorship. And again, no. individual citizens and private entities have no legal obligation whatsoever to defend, protect, promote, or whatever it is you think your freedom of speech is. And it's freedom of expression, not freedom of speech. Not speech. You're not being censored because you're told that what you're saying is dumb. There's no censorship. There. Or ill-informed or uninformed. You're saying it. You're saying it right here. This is the way the world works. Like this. Mm -hmm. You say something, then somebody else gets to say something. And if you, and if you, know, like if you say say. something that opposes something that I say, then I'm being censored. You're the one that's actually censoring because you're telling people, unless you're going to say what it is I want to hear, something that I already pre-agree with, you can't talk. Mm -hmm. Right. You're censoring. You're not the victim. So we're, you just I'm not going to boot you. In something, you just believe something that is not true and you're ill-informed. It's not malicious. It's fact-based. You are ill-informed. As simple as that. It's as simple Nobody as that. Nobody against you. It's not an attack. I say, listen, this is what you believe. I know for a fact that you are factually incorrect. It's like, if you can't handle that, you're not going to function very well in society. Because in society, people will tell you when you're wrong. Simple Journalists, as that. however, don't seem to want to do that anymore. Mr. Grizzly, well, I, if, you, if you put this up, because I, I want to make this point here. Yeah, just okay. a sec. So you have um, Mackenzie Gray, who's a journalist with Global. Mm -hmm. uh, would you read uh, the tweet? I, I, I can't see that. It's too small okay. on my screen. Sorry. I asked PMO why PMJT's original schedule for today said he had no events and was in Ottawa, but was changed at 3.13 p.m. to say he met with Ontario Liberal Caucus in Sudbury which is not a public event, their first publicly known meeting together since Toronto St. Paul's. Here's what they said. The Prime Minister and his team of MPs have been traveling across the country this summer, meeting Canadians where they are. Together, they've been working to make sure Canadians are benefiting from free dental care, $10 a day childcare, and our housing initiatives that are building more homes. And then we had someone else. Ahmad Elbayoumi says, as a journalist, it's incredibly frustrating that an under... And that's an understatement when you ask a clear, precise question and receive a response like this. No, the answer to why the prime minister's schedule was changed is not that they're working on dental care and building more homes. Okay, here's the thing. Politicians have been threatened. Mm -hmm. So they are adjusting. Sadly, our media has been too fascinated 
with conservative and convoy BS because it makes a good story. Pierre, all of these wild claims that Pierre Polyev makes, all these wild claims that Doug Gordon makes, because they make for great stories. But the journalist's job is to get to the facts, report the facts to us, and let us know if the person that they're covering is actually being honest with us or not, because somebody is being dishonest with you when you can actually show the data is a fact. <laughs> right? It's like, if I say yesterday I went to Dairy Queen for lunch, but That's I really fact. went to Red Lobster. Oh, like this, well, there's a difference there then. Then somebody say he was not truthful or not mm. precise or not accurate or whatever euphemism word that they use because for some reason they hate to say lie <laughs> this, or misleading. Alternative or this, facts. <laughs> but that is a fact. I was yeah. not at Dairy Queen. I was, it's not an attack. It's not mean. It's not liberal press media. It's a fact. What I said was not accurate. Right? Mm -hmm. So sadly, our media has been way too fascinated with the, the BS and the razzle dazzle in the show to actually fact check these mm -hmm. politicians. Because these people that seem to think that the whole world is Canadian idol, and if they just show up at a protest and videotape <laughs> themselves, that somehow they'll become famous in a positive way. Yeah. But to actually inform Canadians that their rhetoric is stochastic, toxic, and disqualifying. So you allowed the poison to fester that made it mm -hmm. such that politicians are now showing up places and not telling you beforehand where it is that they're going because that information is public. If that information wasn't public during Harper, this prime minister tried to open up the transparency mm -hmm. on this, and now it's leading people monitoring his airplane when he goes on a family vacation and then accosting him on a beach yeah. when he's there with his kids. It leads yeah. to him getting off a bus and being pelted with pebbles. I understand pebbles and stuff like this, but literally yeah. we're stoning people now. So like, Nazi Kai was to... very lucky the RCMP did not tase him and handcuff him and drag him out of there. Mm -hmm. When he, when he approached the prime minister on a family vacation on a beach in Tofino, Nazi Kai was very lucky. He didn't get beaten down for that. And the only reason it didn't happen was because the prime minister waved the, the security detail off. Yep. If it so, had been a different prime minister, if it had been Stephen Harper, and I pulled that stunt, what do you think? Where do you think I'd be right now? Somebody was fine because they had a fuck Harper. Yeah, Bumper one person, or something like that in the car, right? So one person. Media, don't get mad now <laughs> because you're not getting the information that you wanted earlier. Don't be mad now that you don't have the itinerary. You created this. You created it. And ironically, today, in my uh, politics uh, briefing that I, that I get in, uh, by my email every day, it literally says, and this is the part that really blows my mind, because while the pri they're bitching about the prime minister, who's going to be in uh, southwest Nova Scotia for National Acadian Day, by the way, today, when fait des Acadiens, des Acadiens, um, it says right here, for his part, conservative leader Pierre Polyev will also clock in another day on the hustings in Atlantic Canada, but his office has once again declined to provide any details of his itinerary. Where are these tweets from media about mm. Pierre once again declining to provide details on his itinerary? Yeah. Right? This is yeah. the type of thing, because when you report in an unbalanced manner this way, do not be surprised. If somebody's not going to tell you where you where they're going, I'd say do your job as we do journalists. When mm -hmm. people put out this toxic, when they take political fentanyl and decide, you know what, we're going to put it right here into the bloodstream, we're going to mainline it, mainline it into the mainline. stream of Canadian society, and you do nothing. You sit there and you go, oh my, well, isn't that an interesting and bold strategy? It's not a strategy. It's toxic. Yeah. It's very Call toxic. It out, stop it. Make it uncomfortable for them to do that. 
Yes, mm-hmm. your access will probably be reduced. Yes, you will be ha- because you have a vengeful and punishing leader of the opposition. Mm-hmm. Like this, Very that, vengeful. That, that's the deal, right? Cover him as such. And if that means mm-hmm. you get your access cut, you get your access cut. Now he's trying to go around the media all the time like this, but you notice that every time he tries to, you know, every time he tries to stunt or fundraise, if the CP just stops asking him questions or just keeps on asking him uncomfortable questions and therefore he stops inviting him, at one point he's going to have a very, very small pool of people. Well, and, and, and let's remember something here. He needs he the is CPC. not. So his expenses, he spent how many millions traveling across the country campaigning when there's no election? So that money for that, we pay for that. That's not from donations because Mm -hmm. if he used, if he used donations to do that, he's in violation because Mm -hmm. that's campaigning before the the writ has been dropped, which means they literally would shut him down for want of a better term, because you cannot do what he's doing with uh, donated funds. That is against all of the rules. Mm -hmm. It would be a complete ethics violation. So when he travels around the country, campaigning, having his his whistle stop scrums, his his rallies, whatever the hell you want to call his hate fests, that's our money that's paying for it. All of it. It is not donated funds. It is our cash that is funding Pierre Polyev as he travels across the country campaigning when there's no writ dropped and the election isn't for another year. Yeah. A year. So I'm seeing the chat like this, and this person here that's trying to make this case is now trying to bring Trump into it. We're not going to indulge that. Kits and Cubs, we need to take a tip from the indigenous community. When someone like that shows up in your home, and right now, not engaging in behavior that would require them being banned, just essentially trying to like come into Mm -hmm. your house and say, Hey, everybody look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me like this when we're here, like for a 60th wedding anniversary like this and say, Hey, watch me dance. It's not, we're not not here here to watch dance. Do like the indigenous community. Just turn your back. Mm -hmm. Don't block. Literally. Just ignore. Don't don't argue. Don't argue. Let them cry themselves out. They're clearly here in bad faith. They're clearly here in bad faith. No, I'm not going to block this person. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just, they're, no, nope. they're, they're claiming they're being censored. Don't give them what they want. They're not being censored. <laughs> exactly. You're, 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 so long as you do things in a manner that's respectful, you're, you're welcome. To ha- you're welcome yeah. to have an ill-informed opinion. Stay around. Maybe mm. you'll pick something up. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> maybe if you listen long enough, you'll pick something up. Uh, but you know, if you like, if you're here and you're thinking like us saying like, oh yes, he did raise. Uh, disability payments by like fifty dollars a month is see there's what if that's good enough for you then good for you but it it amounts to nothing your bar is low well during i mean when when inflation was at eight percent that's less than nothing yes we're it's less than nothing we ask people on this chat and on the show and our audience to think critically to compare apples to apples, orange to oranges, and to compare your choices, not to the almighty, but to each other. Because we have a person, when we're talking about Doug Ford, specifically, because who has made it his mission to transfer public good and public wealth to private enterprises, to private entities, regardless of the cost to people, regardless of the cost to people. If you think that's great to be elected to transfer all public wealth to business and leave the people starving, if you think that's good, hey, fine with you. You're, you're, free, to be- you're free to believe stupid things. Believe whatever you want. The Constitution whatever grants you, you that right. You're free to say stupid things, but it doesn't guarantee you an audience and it doesn't force people to have to debate you, and it doesn't have for it force people to acknowledge you. And you might think it's brave to have this opposing view or thinking that you're maverick, but my friend, the line between bravery and courage and utter stupidity and foolishness is very, very thin. Mm-hmm. Very, very thin. 
right? Jumping off a cliff, if you're Tom Cruise with the whole budget with people from like, you know, Mission Impossible and all the training and whatnot exactly. like this, like, that's brave and courageous like this because you've taken all the steps that you can. Something could still go wrong, but you've taken all the steps to make sure that you can survive. Just going up to a cliff and say, hey, watch what I can do and jumping off it, not brave, stupid, <laughs> foolish, reckless. So that line, very, 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 very thin. Um, and I know Razor that you know, we're, all in echo we're all in echo chambers, right? Mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. And there isn't, there's a market for everything. So you can be in an echo chamber where you're saying stupid things and believe that there are things that are ill-informed. And there are people there that are going to pat you on the back and say, hey, Adam, boy, you yes. got it. Yes. Yeah. You're not. You're not. Because at some point, you're going to have to interact with the real world. And real world will tell you, um, no, that's just dumb. So that's just weird. But, and you're going to have to be able to cope with that because by saying something other than censorship. Yeah, what's, what's lib, the next line? Lib, what, how, how soon lib is the next line going to be? Are, right. The next one will be pedo. Oh, yes. You know, that's yes. coming next, right? That That's the next one they go for. Right. Yes, absolutely. So, because I'm willing to join in the live if you allow me to speak. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. This is not your show. Yeah. So thank you for coming and adding to our engagement numbers. Yes. We appreciate we've it. We've addressed your we point. Do. We appreciate it. And we've addressed your point. Now we will move on like this. It's, it, it's not an open forum to give people who believe things that are ill-informed an opportunity to speak. And we have no obligation. See, now it's Putin now. He's throwing in. Just do not react, people. Kids and cubs, please. Just let it go. Just no look, look away. Look away. Um, let, so let I, I want to pivot back. I want to pivot back to Doug Ford for a second here and, and remind everybody of two things he did to harm working people. The first one was eliminate overtime. And you know how he did that. For those of you who don't recall, what he did was he allowed employers to average a person's hours over the course of four weeks over the course of a month. So if you work 60 hours the first week, 40 hours the second week, and 20 and 20, what does that add up to? Mm. 140, mm -hmm. which is under the, the, you know, anything over 44 is overtime. So the first week you would get 16 hours of overtime. Well, no, no, no. you're not getting that because it's averaged over the course of the month. So he's eliminated overtime. Empl it's up to the employer's discretion, but they have the legal right to do that in the province of Ontario. That was one thing he did. Then the next thing he did was he allowed 15-year-olds to quit school and join the trades, except they have no training, which means they'd be apprentices, which means it's free labor that the province will pay for. It's not so much quit school. It's because it's still part Leave of the school, school program. But right, right. core academic You're correct, things correct. that you no longer have to study anymore. That's right. So congratulations, you're a tradesperson, except you have no trades training. Because, so, so if you want to open your own business one day. Good luck. You don't know how to, you don't have any of those fundamental skills. Next thing is because you're an apprentice, that means nobody's paying you. Like your employer is not paying you. Who is paying you? Well, because it's a curriculum thing, the province pays you which means Doug Ford has provided free child labor to contractors across the province because that is exactly what it is. It's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. And yeah. to say otherwise would be foolish. Yep. And you got kicked so two things he did to harm working people. Mm -hmm. And then you got kicker all Carol Car that says eliminating rent controls was his biggest mistake. Canceling the UBI when he actually promised mm -hmm. he wouldn't. Oh, his plans to uh, interfere in the Toronto municipal election to just change it during the course of the campaign. Um, he didn't. Uh, he he didn't run on that either. Um, gee, there was a lot of things that he didn't tell us he was going to do that he ended up doing. A lot of things that the guy who says we have nothing to hide actually kept hidden because if he ran on them, he knew he would win. Right. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the, the, the conservative uh, model now and then it's bait and switch. Even like, remember Melissa Lansman from the federal conservatives around Christmas time. So, so what are your plans? It's like, Oh, you will know our, pl we'll you'll know our plans 36 days before you, you, you're supposed to. 
until then, we're just going to gaslight and BS and whatnot like this. But no, don't you, you don't exactly. you don't get to know like this with a year and a half or two years what even we're thinking about as plans for you. You you, you don't get that because you're not entitled to know because we're, we're using your money. We're doing this in mm-hmm. your name and we're doing this on your time, but you are not entitled to know. You don't get to you find just out wait anything. until the election and you'll get only 36 days to scrutinize all the plans that we have like this. Cause you, you don't just, it's like, what, what, I, I'm sorry. What, did you think we were going to govern? No, no, we want to rule you over you. So peasants chew, stop asking too many questions. Don't worry your pretty little heads about that. We've got you. Yeah. That's what, like, like, oh, and and please don't expect us to show up to debates. (laughs) In case you have some questions. We don't do that. No, no. No, no. We don't like being questioned. Because, and if you do question me, then I'm going to ask you from what media you are, and then I'm going to, like, Make the whole press conference about putting you down just for doing your job. Or you're you're right. you're from CP. You're from CP. You're the, the, the Justin Trudeau liberal funded. No, no, no. That's not the case. It never has been. Canadian press provides stories to every one in the country. Every media outlet in the country uses Canadian press. Canadian press has been around for what a hundred years. Mm. This is not, the, it's not a government wing. It never has been. It's an independent body. Yeah. So <sighs> the uh, fact that, yeah, that he nah. can say those things and nobody slaps back is what kills me. Why is nobody in the media slapping back and go, no, we're not. We've never been a wing of the government. Are you going to say we were part of Harper's government when he was in power? Because the Canadian press was around then. Were we part of the Cretchen government, the Mulroney government? No. Why is nobody slapping him back for that? Exactly. Now, kids and cubs, once again, please, I'm asking in the chat, just do not interact. Just let it go. Turn your back. Turn your back. They are putting out bait to get you to react. All these statements are silly, just, and they're wild to get you to react. Don't give the candy to the baby. Just don't react. Ignore them. Trolls are like teeth. If you ignore them, they go away. All right. Other things in the news going on. Um, a senior Hamas official has confirmed that Hamas will not participate in ceasefire talks that are set to take place tomorrow in either Qatar or Egypt. Uh, the spokesperson said today that the group wants Israel to commit to a ceasefire proposal discussed last month and that it was based on President Biden's vision. Uh, This official said that if Israel commits, Hamas would be prepared to start discussing how to implement the deal, uh, but that Hamas will not be part of the new rounds of talks that start, uh, that are set to start. Whether this is posturing, we don't know. Yeah, uh, Uh, we don't know. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blamed Hamas for obstructing negotiations, but the New York Times reported on Tuesday that documents show Netanyahu has been inflexible in recent talks and adding new conditions to his demands. Of course, Netanyahu denies the report. Um, don't know what's going to happen on that one, but uh, you know, you, 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 pay attention, stay tuned, I guess. Um, for uh, people on the east coast of Canada and in Newfoundland, um, there's another tropical storm uh, coming. Uh, tropical storm Ernesto uh, was just off the east coast of Puerto Rico. It had uh, sustained winds at 70 miles per hour. I don't, not sure what that is in kilometers off the top because I got this from an American report, which is just below the 80s, 80s, about 120. 120, so, I think. Uh, so. 100, 140, sorry, 140. Yeah, 140. So, uh, National Hurricane Center meteorologist Robbie Berg says that the island is getting significant rain. And when all is said and done for Puerto Rico, we're expecting about six to eight inches. Maybe some local areas could have to tap up to 10 inches. And of course, Puerto Rico is mountainous. So that much rain on the mm. island like that, you may end up getting pretty severe, pretty severe flash flooding. Yeah, uh, no Ernest is projected to strengthen two hurricane force moving to the U.S. and British Virgin Islands as well as Bermuda. And it's expected that it will affect Canada around the area of the east coast of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, mm. the island part of Newfoundland itself, not Labrador at the moment. That's right. And that's, so, that's um, uh, Sunday, Monday, I believe. Yeah. That is so, expected uh, to arrive. Yeah. yeah. So uh, prepare for that if you're there. 
Um, let's see what else do we have. Uh, there's um, in uh, Alberta, there is a uh, person that was um, helping to uh, fight fires who died. Oh, I as didn't a result, know that. Uh, because a tree had fallen on them. Um, now, once again, Ouch. this raises, uh, raises um, questions as to, and this is something that we will never know, but it raises the questions, had Daniel Smith not made that those cuts and cuts and cuts and had the observers and had the repellers and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, would the situation have gotten so bad that somebody would have had to die? Um, ironically, uh, this is happening on the one-year anniversary of last year's fires when a uh, female firefighter in BC uh, died because a tree fell on her as well. Wow. And it seems that uh, there were uh, safety things that were ignored uh, in that case. Uh, and that, uh, that there was a culture within the firefighting group of uh, ignoring certain types of dangers with regard to uh, mm. when you're chopping down trees around other trees that are burning. So uh yeah it's uh there are the 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 tweets of daniel smith has blood on her hands mm -hmm. uh with mm -hmm. regard um again this is something that we can never know what the situation would have been otherwise uh, right. all that we know is that were that an unacceptable level of risk was allowed mm -hmm. to take place based not only on the cuts, but then, you know, six months before, three months before, 60 days before they had the fire mm -hmm. map, they did nothing. Yeah. They did nothing. They did not respond. They did not react. They didn't. And even, you know, she actually canceled an emergency evacuation order saying that people had gotten misinformation. Like she actually inter mm -hmm. intervened physically. It's right. like, oh, we can't have people panicking. It's like when, look what happened. A third of the town is gone. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, um, our, our thoughts are with um, the, the family, of course, uh, of both uh, Canadians who have died last year and this year. Uh, I believe uh, that services uh, for the, the young man uh, were recently held. Um, so, uh, because this happened uh, about maybe a week and a half uh, or go or so. Or, but yeah, it's. Um, it's a like listen it's a job that comes with risk maybe they could have done all the things right and these things would have still happened anyway okay? we don't know but we do know that the people that went in to fight this fire and jasper uh were not given the best possible conditions at the time that they were called in order to be as effective as they could which was not necessarily the case in british columbia last year um so we'll uh do that uh let's see what else do we we have going on yeah um yesterday also we'll talk about it more tomorrow hopefully um dominic cardi who was part of the blaine higgs government and uh left in protest um mm -hmm. uh and then uh, he left uh, the caucus and protest, protest and then, uh, no, sorry, he, he left cabinet and then was ejected from caucus right. in 2022. Uh, went to the National Press Theater to introduce a newly registered party called the Can Canadian Future Party. Um, Andrew Coyne seems to be championing it a lot, uh, mm -hmm. which will appear on the ballot in two upcoming by-elections uh, and will provide, quote, a centrist option for voters, it argues, are growing very weary of an increasingly polarized environment. Yeah, I think I think this Canada Future Party could be could, and I don't know enough to to make this full comment, but I, I think they could be the new Progressive Conservative Party. Yes, that's how they're trying. They're trying to put them yeah. that way, saying that they're fiscally responsible but socially liberal. Um, so yeah, and uh, Cardi, uh, I would say of uh, all the people that have started new parties recently, is probably the one that might have the more serious mm -hmm. uh, attempt approach organization uh center ice conservatives seem to go absolutely nowhere of the other unfortunately um yeah so 
this seems to Scott be, Aitchison, uh, you might want to check this this out because Scott Aitchison, I had belief in him. He seems to have gotten onto the PP bandwagon, but I had belief in that guy. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe, maybe take a look, but maybe take a look. And Michael Chong, if you want some of your soul. Michael back. Chong. Yes, you could absolutely go that way. And we would. Michelle Rumpel Garner, mm-hmm. you have an opportunity here. You have an opportunity here. Yeah. As uh, the as the one sole progressive with a voice in that party, yeah, who does progressive things and then the next day does something completely idiotic and stupid. Yeah, <laughs> there are some good conservatives out there that could jump ship to a serious think, yeah. initiative. If uh, real, yes, yes, yes. Because uh, listen, because Pierre Polyev has made it very clear: yes, if you are not in lockstep, you're going to get purged. Or silenced or sidelined or censored as was the case with an mp recently who said there's a pathway to keep the cbc radio going that doesn't fall in line with his defund the cbc and that just went so vanished off the web um, yeah yeah uh, not so great not so great all right kids and cubs uh mr grizzly do we have a show we do indeed sir all right kids and cubs that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. Um, we uh, love making this for you. So um, thank you for stopping in. <laughs> Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So um, please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And uh, thank you, Kits and Cubs, for eventually uh, doing what it is that I asked uh, because it uh, led this person to say, all right, guys, I have to run out to the gym. It was nice chatting with you all. I'll see you soon. Um, so, um, uh, personally, hoping they don't come back uh, because they attempted to do something today. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, like I said, we did acknowledge them. Mm-hmm. Right? We're not saying, no, you don't exist, but we acknowledged them. We explained. This person is clearly not willing to get it. Play nice because or get out of our sandbox. Was, well, yeah, it, it's not even a question of play nice. It's like, if you're going to come here to say stupid shit, don't expect people to interact with you. <laughs> or if they are or, interacting with you, expect them to tell you you're wrong. And if they're telling you that you're wrong like this, don't get mad or upset or play the victim. Oh my God, I'm being censored. It's like, it's not how it works. <laughs> when you say something, there will be a consequence. You're, not so this, you're entitled to free speech or freedom of expression, you're not entitled to consequence free speech or speech that will go without a response or speech that comes with a guaranteed platform. Like, let me come on your show and speak. No. Well, well, Why? okay. This person said, let me come on your show and speak. They also said they're 22 years old and black. I'm like, okay, come on camera and prove it. Prove it. No. I'm, I'm, I don't even, I don't give No, I'm being sarcastic. That. I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. So you Listen, on things you have to understand about social media kits when people, anybody can make a claim on social media. How do yes. you know? Well, I'm a doctor. It's like, okay, I'm going to take, oh, are what are you going to do? Show me your license. PhD. Show me your, your page. Like, but and even if you did like this, you're, you're going to take a screen cap and then show or a picture of it mm-hmm. and show me mm-hmm. and pictures can be altered. And like a lot of people on social media say a lot of things and make a lot of claims about themselves. I do all my own stunts. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, you know, yeah, it's like, I can, I can listen. I actually am a national level debater <laughs> because I went to the national chapter. There were people there because, because I was 19. Do I have their phone numbers for uh, someone to come on and say, yes, you were. Of course I don't. Because you have to take my word for it because I can claim it all I want. It may be true. It may not be true. I have no way of proving it. I guess, and you have no way of proving that I'm not. There you go. The only way you can judge if I'm a good debater is about how I interact with your points and how I choose to capture them. Do I go off and talking about Putin and Trump or whatnot, or do I actually stay and deal with your point and I'm using logic and rationality and things that you can go back and check? If If I am, I may be a good debater. If I'm not, I'm probably a bullshitter. But that's something you have to figure out. Because don't take my word on it. A lot of people on social media claim a lot of things. 
It's like, oh, I can't believe you talk like that to a woman. It's like, okay. I like Apple's 724652 with an avatar of a lake. It's like, sure, you're a woman. You could be a 45-year-old, 125-pound soaking wet guy like this at a Starbucks in Nanaimo. Mm-hmm. Like this. I have no way of knowing. You could be People anything you want on social media. Put your money where out. your mouth is. Put your face out front. Prove who you are. This is Otherwise, why I, would like, I don't believe you. This is why right. I would like social media laws to be that you actually have to have your own name and your own picture, and you need to register your yeah. account. Simple as that. Like I said, you can't, you can't have seven or eight or nine of them like this under your own name. You get one. And then then you are responsible for what you say. Well, the amount of people that come to me and tell me I'm wrong about everything, but I'm like, excuse me, but you, you you don't have your real name there and you have a picture of a maple leaf. You're an anonymous keyboard warrior troll, probably living in your mom's basement because according to Pierre Polyev, everybody does. Uh, Maybe you're living in your mom's basement. I don't know, but you're an anonymous keyboard warrior troll. They're like, well, you you know, in good faith arguments, I go, no, I have no good faith in you. I don't know who you are. I have no. You don't put your face forward. You don't put your name forward. I will never trust you because I don't know who you are. You're a complete anonymous troll. Yeah. So So guess what? You don't get my time. Relationships online with people that you'll probably never meet, but that Mm -hmm. online friendships like this, it's over time. There's a track record. Oh yes. It's not like oh, I just met. I've just I've just stumbled upon your account, and I'm going to tell you who you are. It's like, you don't know me. All you've done is confess that I speak about things that I know nothing about. That's mm-hmm. that's what you showed me. So these things develop over time. Over time, you know, when we celebrated Scribula Torah, it wasn't like we saw one post from Scribula Torah. It's like no. it was a body of work over time. There was a manner of interacting with people that you could see. You could see what someone's values are. You could see the quality of the information over time. And then they become a trusted reference. Like you don't just pop into a room and say, I'm here, here's what I believe, put me on. It's like, no, you have to well, earn that. And, and we had a long standing. We've had guests, uh, we've had kids on the show, right? We had Sean yes. Stafford, what he was bringing about that uh, long-term care, uh, uh, that Cedars home that mm-hmm. was being evacuated, well, not evacuated, but shut down in a really weird way. Like, was, we, we've had uh, Jordan's mom. This, we have people from our community come up. This, but there are people that have shown us over months and years Mm -hmm. that they are good faith, that they're reliable, that they're, you know, that they're of, that their, their motivations are proper, that they actually care about the issue and not about coming on a show to be famous or get a clip or something that they can point to all their friends or to disrupt something. They actually want to bring something, a bit of information or knowledge to the community. Yes. These things happen over time. They're not instant. You've got to build a reputation. Yes. And you can blow it really quickly. All right. That's why you got to be consistent over time. All right. Remember, sharing is caring. Word of mouth is priceless. So tell your peeps and poops all about us. We try to create the little corner on the web where, you know, decent people can interact decently mm-hmm. and be of good faith. Right? The rest of the web is there for all the other stuff. But we try to create this little corner, little oasis of sanity pretty much. If you would like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray girl. Cause she's fun. She's fly. And she's fabulous and very, very generous. <laughs> so go to our podpagecom slash the true North eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. The comments from the kids are um, really good and they're making me smirk and <laughs> oh man oh geez uh i forgot where i was <laughs> sorry um so yeah uh all right pod page you know where to find us if you would like to help us in other ways make like Kayla lane and surf on down to the true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube page where like share and subscribe our three buttons are there waiting for you i'll keep putting them up mr grizzly I'm good with that. <laughs> I will muddle through somehow. Trying to. Uh, there we go. So if you uh, 
if you do uh, go there and click like, share, and subscribe, that makes us very happy. Thank you so very much. And if you would like to support us in other ways, the QR code that is up by Mr. Grizzly's head, that will bring you to our coffee page. That's coffee, K-O-F-I.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And there, if you happen to have a little bit of change uh, jingling in your pocket and you would like to contribute to uh, Let's Get Mr. Beaver a New Computer Fund, uh, we would be very, very grateful. Thank you. And thank you. Scheduled to be delivered already. today. Scheduled to be delivered. To, yes, yes. It's actually left. Like there's, there's like four dots that says where it is in the process. We're now on dot two. <laughs> we do not know the distance between dot two and dot three yet. <laughs> uh, but yes, please do uh, that. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're grateful uh, for all the help that you can give us. Now, if you're not able to help us financially, of course, that's quite all right. Because the gift of your attention and your participation and as a member of the best damn fam in all the podcasting is greatly appreciated. So we love to hear from you. True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com is where you can reach us, or you can leave us a comment on our YouTube page, on our Twitter feed at True Eager, or our Facebook page, True North Eager Beaver. Thank you for your story suggestions, your comments, your jokes, um, your well wishes, uh, your encouragement when we're having tougher days, all of that means the world to us. You're great. We love you. Um, you're, you're like breakfast. You're an essential part of my day. And very, very nutritious. Good for my soul. So uh, I thank you very much. And I'm sure Mr. Grizzly feels the same way. Indeed. Our, um, all right. Because democracy is something that you do. By-elections coming up. Ward 15 in Toronto. Elmwood, Transcona in Manitoba, La Salleville et Mar Verdun in Quebec. Of course, uh, elections come up in October in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and New Brunswick. So uh, do what you have to do to find your candidates of choice. Be informed. Make sure to cast an informed vote. Uh, plan your vote. Make sure that you will be able to. Try to encourage some people to come and vote with you because democracy is not a spectator sport. Get out All there right. and do it. Let's get out there and do it. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there. Please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom. Drive safe. Drive safe. And I, I have I some, word, yep, some words of wisdom. Um, remember, when you see a troll, don't feed the brain donkey. <laughs> if they say something really stupid, if you are Just going to it. respond, well, yeah, ignore it. Or if they're going to respond, Respond for the benefit of people who might stumble upon the conversation mm -hmm. and need to see that being at. But don't respond to try and win. I guess keep your responses to maybe one or two interactions. And then the good Lord created people who invented the mute and block buttons for a reason. I got to go. I'm 12 minutes over. I'll see you. All right. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. <laughs>